So good afternoon and welcome. Thank you for joining this webinar and I'm looking forward to guiding you through this demonstration of our newest item here at Rifton, the large size of the dynamic pacer. My name's Delph and here we have the large dynamic pacer. We're looking forward to having the medium size of the new dynamic pacer available for you in June or July after which our design team will continue to work on redesigning the small. So we're doing an entire redesign of the pacer. So far we have the large size complete and that is what I will be showing you today. During the session if you have a question feel free to type your question into the chat window or I will give opportunities for questions at the end of each section and you can always unmute yourself and ask the question and I will answer it for you. So three years ago when our design team set about redesigning the pacer and designing the dynamic pacer, the first thing they did was to conduct a survey of 4,000 therapists, out of which 700 responded and our design team took all the feedback they got from those therapists and narrowed down to five main points of features that the therapists wanted to see on an improved version of the pacer. Those features included an easier height adjust. They included our new dynamic feature, which allows for dynamic weight bearing and weight shifting. And it also included a new major accessory, the multi-position saddle, which allows for better pelvic positioning during gait training, as well as easier loading and unloading of clients. Finally, they developed three new bases to allow for more versatile action on various surfaces outdoor, indoor, and also so you'd be able to use your pacer over a treadmill. So in brief, that's what I'm going to go over today in the demonstration. I'll start here with the gas assist height adjust. To adjust the height of the upper frame on your new pacer, all you have to do is press the lever, the white lever under the head here, push to go down and simply press the lever and it'll come up for you. There's a 30 pound gas assist in that single column there. You'll also notice that there are height indexing marks on the front of the column which allow you to record the height, the optimal height for the given client so that adjusting the next time round for therapy you'll be able to record the previous height and get it right the second time very quickly and easily. So that's the height adjust on the upper. Of course we now have a single column upper instead of two columns going down which allows for better accessibility to adjust supports and also access the client from the sides. And then the other great new feature about our uppers is that you can take them off and collapse the whole product by pressing this white button here, taking the upper easily out of the base frame and collapsing it, which enables you to easily stow it in the trunk of a car for transportation. It also allows you to use one upper on any of our three bases, which is a great asset to you. So that is the basics on the height adjust and our single column upper. I'm going to move on to our new dynamic feature. Here you see this is a standard upper. This is a dynamic upper and you'll notice it has adjustments which allow you to lock out the dynamic feature or unlock it. Right now we're in lock position. To unlock the vertical movement, you just push this lever up to the unlock position and you get three to four inches 
of play up and down. To unlock the side to side movement, you just push this back lever forward and you get about two inches of play side to side. For best results, when using the dynamic feature, just activate the swivel lock on your pacer so that the pacer moves in a straight course and doesn't veer side to side, and you'll get the best results for your dynamic weight bearing and weight shifting system. Obviously, a client will have more weight on the pacer, and as they walk, the pacer shifts back and forth and up and down so that they're not limited to a rigid gait training structure, and that allows them to acquire a more typical gait training pattern. So that's the basics of your dynamic feature. Of course, if you do want to lock it back out again, lock out the vertical movement, lock out the horizontal movement, and you've essentially got a standard upper frame. So that's the dynamic feature. And now I would like to show you a short video clip which shows a client in a dynamic pacer and will show you how the dynamic feature of the pacer can help a client gait training over a treadmill. So we'll do that now. During ambulation, the pelvis wants to move freely, both vertically and laterally. Most gait trainers limit these normal biomechanics. Until now, the new Dynamic Pacer from Riften offers an upper frame with fabulous new possibilities. Vertical movement for dynamic weight bearing and lateral movement for dynamic weight shifting. Here we meet Scott, an 18-year-old with mild cerebral palsy and autism. Given his compromised strength and low tone, the treadmill will provide an opportunity to gain strength, endurance, and walking stamina. Here we see the dynamic upper frame placed on the treadmill stability base. The built-in height adjustment of the base allows it to clear the treadmill while Scott steps up onto the belt. This is Scott's first time ever on a treadmill. Note how the dynamic feature on the upper frame encourages a more natural gait pattern and easier stepping for Scott. We anticipated that the moving belt would be a new and different experience for Scott. Without the support of the pacer, it would be very difficult to do this kind of gait therapy safely. The side-to-side -side movement allows for up to two inches of horizontal movement. This lateral freedom allows Scott to shift his weight from one limb to the other. The up and down movement allows Scott to move his center of gravity vertically and assist weight bearing so that the opposite limb can swing through more easily. With practice, Scott will improve his ability to walk on a treadmill. This option enables him to do more walking at home, where space and opportunity for overground walking are very limited. On the treadmill, Scott can continue to increase his walking strength and endurance. So hopefully that video answered some of your questions and helped you to see how the dynamic feature of our new pacer works with a client supported by it. At this point, I'll give a little bit of time if anyone has a question on what I've covered so far, specifically the height adjust and the dynamic feature of the dynamic pacer. Okay, in that case, I will move on to the next great feature that we've developed here at Riften. That is our multi-position saddle. And as I said before, the multi-position saddle combines better pelvic positioning as well as easier loading and unloading of clients. So I'll start with the pel pelvic positioning features. So to insert your multi-position saddle into the pacer, all you have to do is press this little white button on the side. 
and push the multi-position saddle up into the pacer. To take it out, you just have to press, again press the little button on the side, and then press the large button in front, and it comes straight out. Obviously, that's a safety feature, so that if someone hits a button while someone is in the pacer, the MPS does not fall out with someone still in. So that's how it's installed. I will move on to the different positions and adjustments that you can make on your multi-position saddle. So first of all, you can adjust the height with this white lever down here. And it goes from its bottom position and moves all the way up through eight inches of range in height. The multi-position saddle height adjust also has height indexing marks along the front. So again, you can record the optimal height for a given client in the multi-position saddle. So that should be very useful to you. The next adjustment we have is the tilt. With your hand in the same place, just push this button on the back of the MPS, and that allows for five positions of tilt, 15 degrees forward, seven and a half degrees forward, flat, seven and a half degrees back, and 15 degrees back. So that allows you a nice range of tilt positions. Next we have this lever under the seat which allows for seat position. So it allows the seat to slide through a range of positions with about six inches of play. Then we have then we have the hip corral and the back pad here, which secures the client into the pacer. The hip corral can also slide forward by pressing this white lever at the front and pulling out. And it has six positions covering a range of three to four inches in which you can adjust the position of the hip corral in relation to the seat. The other adjustment you can make is the height of the hip corral by pushing this button. You can go all the way up and all the way down here with several different intervals in between. You can also take the hip corral all the way off if you need to, like that. So that covers all the basic positions that you can acquire with the multi-position saddle. I will now go on to loading and unloading of clients and demonstrate that using a chair here. So you turn your pacer, you'd have your client in some sort of seating device, it could be an activity chair or a wheelchair or something else. Undo the buckles here so the back pad hangs down behind, and then back up to the chair. Lower the pacer all the way down with the main height adjust, and then you can always adjust the height of the saddle so the, the client can slide on easily. So you help the client to slide straight onto the seat there, secure them into the hip corral by fastening the buckles on both sides. And then once you have them secure, raise them to an approximate height with your main height adjust. And then you can always adjust the multi-position saddle using the height adjustment, the seat positioning forward and back, the tilt, as well as the adjust for the hip corral. So that is the basic procedure of loading a client into the dynamic pacer. Again, one of your great features is that you have a single column at, at the front giving you great accessibility from both sides.
the one other thing you can still do is allow for reverse ambulation. Having the client in the pacer, um, walking with the pacer, supporting them from behind. To do that, what you'd need to do is take off the hip corral. push down the, the forward backward slide, pinch the tabs at the front, and push the seat out, turn it around, and put it back in the same way, and you have them supported from behind with the seat backwards. So those are all the basics of the multi-position saddle. Better pelvic posi positioning during gait training, as well as loading and unloading of clients. Does anyone have a question at this point? Hi. Hi, we have a question here um, about transferring a client from the um, from a wheelchair into the pacer because we tried in a ch with a chair. Well, we don't. Our, most of our clients here are in wheelchairs, so it's been a little harder okay. to try to get them. So, what's your? I guess the best method to do that from a wheelchair. Yeah, versus like you, you demonstrate how you did it from a chair, but for, right. for the wheelchair, it's a little harder. I'll have my colleague Juanita explain a little bit more, but it, I think it's a little hard to get around the wheelchair. The frame, the frame doesn't fit around the wheelchair base, so we can't get them close enough to get on the saddle seat. Okay. Well, I could see that being a problem um, if the if the base doesn't fit around a chair. I guess. The closest you could get the client is like I showed you, and you just have to help them onto the seat. Um, you can adjust with the um, multi-position height adjust to the best position for that, but you would have to help them out of their wheelchair if the um, base uh -huh. doesn't go around the wheelchair. So that would just take, um, okay. I guess, a couple therapists helping the client from the, right. from the wheelchair onto the dynamic pacer. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Yes. And I saw that you could slide the seat. Mm -hmm. We can slide the seat a little closer to the client. Right. You can slide yeah. the seat all the way back and then get the best height you can for them. And then once you've got them secured, you can always adjust from there. So hopefully okay, that gives gotcha. you, hopefully that gives you some good options. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, very good. Okay, then I will move on to our last wow factor, which is our bases. As you can see, we have three styles of base. The standard, the standard indoor base, the utility base for outdoor use, and our new treadmill base. So I'll start with the standard base. And just so you're aware, the standard upper standard base combination is priced the same as the old Pacer large size. So you can get the same thing that you always did before for the same price and then add on any accessories you'd like in addition to that. And I'll show you that even the standard upper and the standard base have some great new features as well. Um, the casters on the standard base have all the same features as we had before. They're just better marked and also better quality casters 
as they have twice as many ball bearings in them. Another great thing about this combination is that it's 20% lighter than the old um, large pacer frame. So it's an improved version just right off the bat. Um, I'll go through the basic features here. You have the swivel lock that's e easily activated by hitting the button on the top here. And then it's disengaged by just hitting that white tab right there at the back. And you've got your swivel on again. So that's the swivel lock. Then you have the brake. And you just turn that on by hitting the tab above the wheel and release by kicking it back like that. And then two other features we have, just like always, are the drag feature. So you can go from light resistance all the way back to heavier resistance, and that gives you resistance for when you have a client in the pacer and you don't want the pacer to run away with them. So that's the same feature, just better marked with those nice new bars there. And then we also have an anti-reverse lock. So that it makes the caster go forward and not backward with a ratchet like that. So those are your four caster features. If you are, um, if you are doing reverse ambulation, so having the client supported from behind, then you just turn the, the casters around like that, and you've got your reverse ambulation with the anti-reverse lock just the same as if you were going forward. And then a new feature we have is an odometer caster at the front there. So no more counting floor tiles or laps around the gym. All you have to do at the start of a journey is to press down on the reset button and it'll take you back to zero and then you can start your charting of progress from there. If you would like to see the total distance the pacer has traveled, you just hold the reset button down for three seconds or so or even a little less and it'll tell you in thousands of feet. So that one there was 15,000 feet. The number is 15. That means 15,000 feet is the distance that this pacer has traveled altogether. If you'd like to switch to meters, you just have to hold the reset button down for 10 seconds or so, and that'll switch to meters if meters are more helpful to your counting. So that's a great new feature. Um, it's an accessory, so if you'd like an odometer caster on your pacer, you can order an odometer caster, and that goes for the standard base, it goes for the treadmill base, and the utility base. So I'll move on to the utility base then, and show you its features. The standard base is 28 inches wide, or rather will fit through a 28 inch doorway, the utility base with the wheels at the back, you'll notice is a little wider, so um, it'll take a 32 inch doorway to fit through. 11 inch wheels at the back and eight inch casters at the front. Um, all the same caster features. You've got the odometer there, um, but because you have wheels at the back and casters at the front, obviously slightly different configuration. You've got your swivel lock at the front there to release, just hit the tab in the front. And you've got your swivel. To lock it, just hit that button on top. And you've got the swivel locked out. And we do recommend um, using the swivel lock for dynamic, um, when you want to use the dynamic feature. Um, because that keeps the pacer in a straight course while the client is using the dynamic body support and shifting back and forth and up and down. So that should be helpful to you. And then the rest of the caster features are at the back here. 
you've got your brake. It just you just push it down with your foot and back up with your foot. You've got your anti-reverse lock so that your pacer only goes forward. And then you've also got your drag feature to give yourself a little more resistance, again, very nicely and clearly marked. So that's your drag feature. So that's the utility base. And this one is great for outdoor use. It gives you the ability to traverse much more rough terrain in a safe manner. <coughs> Finally, we have our treadmill base here. And I'm just going to show you how the treadmill base fits over a treadmill. So to use the treadmill base, you just take your base and it inserts very nicely into the treadmill base. It clicks in. And then you bring your client from wherever they started out around to the front of the treadmill. When you get to the treadmill then, you'll want another therapist supporting the client to get up onto the treadmill. But we have a very nice um, raising feature here. You just push down that lever and raise the whole upper frame up over the treadmill to the appropriate height. You've got all the same settings of your upper frame and you've got your client over the treadmill. You can lock your wheels at the back and you're all set for gait training over the treadmill, which obviously gives you great new opportunities for you staying in a sedentary position and assisting with their gait training from the side, easy adjustment of supports and all the rest. So there's the treadmill option. Now we do have two sizes of treadmill base. This one is 35 inches wide. The other is 40 inches wide for wider treadmills, which some institutions or schools do have. The other great thing about the treadmill base is that um, we also call it the stability base as it gives a wider base for taller clients under 200 pounds, which is our um, large size maximum weight. Um, and that gives you greater stability for gait training anywhere else. The casters on the treadmill frame, again, you have your odometer caster, and then you have all the same features of your standard base on the treadmill base casters. So that covers our three bases. At this point, does anyone have a question on any of the bases or any other question on the material I've covered so far? I'd like to know how wide the treadmill base is. Okay. We've got two sizes of treadmill base. One treadmill base is 35 inches wide, and the other, the larger size, is 40 inches wide. So, you, so this one here, which is 35 inches wide, will go over a normal treadmill, but some places do have wider ones, so we do have a 40 inch wide treadmill base as well. Any other questions? <clears throat> so those are our big new improvements, but there's a few more things to go over. I showed you our major new accessory, the MPS, but we have a couple other accessories to show you. There's a couple new developments, but the great news is that all of our old accessories 
are combat compatible with the new pacer except for ankle prompts. Ankle prompts is the one exception. You will need to get the appropriate ankle prompt for the base as the bases are all different designs. So you'll need a treadmill base ankle prompt or a utility base ankle prompt or a standard base ankle prompt. Those are not compatible with the old. However, as you can see here, we have two bars on the side of the pacer upper which allow for um, the same clamps we used before to be put on. So I'm just going to show you how that would work. So it's the same clamp here and it clamps onto this bar here. And one of the new developments we have is a new style of communication tray. And as you can see, this communication tray has an arm that can swing around to allow you to have the communication tray directly in front of the client. And it has a knob up on the top here for you to be able to swing the communication tray around to get it where you want. And then like before, you can always loosen the knob underneath to adjust the tilt of the communication tray or to turn it from side to side as you need. So that's the new commu communications tray. And then the other new thing we have <coughs> is the arm platform. This is a simple new accessory for arm support for the the client to lean onto while they are in the pacer. So it slides into a clamp just like before. Like the arm prompt, it has a knob underneath which helps you to adjust which helps you to adjust the tilt and the position of the arm platform and it's nice and simple, it's just a good feature for um, a client to put weight on. They can hold the front and lean on it, and it has two straps to strap their arm in. So that's our other new development here. And then otherwise, all the prompts and accessories that you used before are still available and compatible with our new pacer. Um, the one that I do want to demonstrate here is the chest prompt and I'm sure you'll notice that with the multi-position saddle and chest prompt combination you can get a very nice, um, you have very nice options for positioning the client in the gate trainer. So you just put on your clamps, one on each side, as always. And then you have your same chest prompt that slides into the clamps. And again, you can open it at the back to load your client into the pacer. And from there, using the knobs, you can always make the necessary adjustments to have a forward tilt and you have your same height adjustments on the clamps um, as always. So that's how our accessories work on the new dynamic pacer. There's a request to see the hip positioner. So you okay. can show that on the pacer. Okay. So I'll demonstrate how you'd put the hip positioner onto the pacer.
of course the multi-position saddle covers a lot of the um, of what a hip positioner is for um, with pelvic positioning but um, you have to do what's right for your um, client and so the hip positioner is still available if you need it. So you just put the hand holds in at the back here just like before. Clip your hip positioner in. And then fasten it onto the front of the pacer like that. So it still works just the same way for you. Does that answer the question? Any other questions still? Um, so that covers all the main points of the new dynamic pacer. <coughs> And again, I'm sure you'll notice that having the upper um, detachable from the base um, gives you the opportunity to have a designated upper for each client in, say, a larger school or institution. Um, obviously, the upper is a hygiene concern, as well as the fact that you can have all the adjustments and supports you need for a given client. Um, on their designated upper and then with the new with the three new bases you can choose which base they use on a given day or for a given activity giving them a nice wide range of activity the other great thing is that with the three different bases you can also share those bases so that many different students could use the same treadmill or outdoor base which gives you um, good shared economy of bases there. Um, so to sum it all up, I think we've come out with a very nice new product that should help you a lot in your work. Um, it's more versatile than before. The adjustments are very intuitive and clearly marked. Should be easier to use. As always, it's highly durable. And again, you have your standard upper standard base for the same price. Any accessory on top of that, you can buy from there, but you're starting with the same basic product um, um, with new designs included. So thank you very much for joining the session today. I appreciated, and it was a privilege for me to guide you through the demonstration, and have a great day.